Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad. It's along with Pastor Roger Pierce and Pastor Tim Nybrock. I want to welcome you here. Uh, if you're a guest with us today, if this is your first time worshiping here at Resurrection at Saddle, welcome. Uh, we're so happy that you're here. Please come and worship with us again real soon. It is always a joy to be up here at Saddlebrook and being with all of you, and uh, I miss you uh, in the weeks. Uh, it's been a couple months now since I've last preached up here. And so six people will know how many weeks it's been. So it's been a long time, but uh, as many of you know, our pastoral staff uh, has grown at Resurrection, and so we're certainly thankful and blessed, and uh, uh, we all look forward to spending some time uh, with all of you up here at Saddlebrook as well in the, in the months ahead. So uh, once again, welcome to worship, welcome home. I invite you to please stand now for our opening hymn.
that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in the due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Be the second reading is Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? The who do not slander with their tongue, and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors. In whose eyes the wicked are despised, but in the mind of those who fear the Lord, who stand by their hope, even to Who do not lend money at interest, who do not take a bribe against the innocent, those who do these things shall never be moved. The word of the Lord. And listening 
did Jesus tell stories? And Jesus applauds Mary. Hmm. When Martha asked Jesus to instruct her sister to get up and do some of the hef heavy lifting, his response must have broken her heart. Martha, Martha, Jesus said, you are distracted by so many details while Mary has made the better choice to sit and listen to me. You know, for 2,000 years now, I think Mary has gotten a bad, or excuse me, Martha has gotten a bad rap. Right? Because in that early Jewish culture, she was doing exactly what was expected of her. You see, it was assumed that the woman, women in the house would make all the preparations for guests. And she was doing what women had done for generations before her. It was Martha who first welcomed Jesus into the home. Did you notice that? And someone had to bring Jesus a cold drink, prepare a meal, set a table, clear the dishes. And we can only assume that Martha did all of this, too. So who can you blame? Can you blame her for being upset? And perhaps the safest thing Jesus could have done was to ask the sisters to go to a quiet place and resolve the issue themselves. But Jesus doesn't do the safe thing here. Jesus takes a side. He teaches a lesson. He announces that ordinary cultural standards are to be set aside in extraordinary moments. And when the Son of God is in your living room, that certainly is an extraordinary moment. You know, after all these years, I'm not sure we've grasped that lesson of Jesus. Instead, we have acquiesced to the thought that there are only two kinds of people in this world. There are only Martha's and Mar uh, Martha's and Mary's. Sometimes get those two names mixed up. They're awfully close to each other. But there are only those who are so entirely absorbed in religious things that they're oblivious to the needs of those around them. They have been described as being so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Those are the Marys, right? The Marthas, on the other hand, are those whose obsessions are cleaning and cooking and serving and seeing to everyone else's comfort, except their own. They rarely take time to care for themselves. These are the Marthas, the unselfish servants. And so what I want to do here this morning is to take a little poll to see how many of the people of Resurrection and Saddlebrook see themselves. How many of you, with a show of hands here this morning, see yourselves as the Marthas? You know, the worker bees. Yes. I'm available for dinner after. <laughs> and who among you see yourselves as Mary? You know, a religious woman whose life is occupied with constant thought of Jesus and his love and his grace. But I would suggest that there's a third category. There are Marys, there are Marthas, but there's also Bubba's. <laughs> this is the guy or the gal who comes home from work or from golfing or from a hike, sits down in the Barker lounger, watches ESPN, maybe the British Open today, until they fall asleep. Are there any Bubba's in this room? <laughs> <laughs> we got one of them here. But in all seriousness, I imagine that the majority of us would fall yet into another category. You know, friends, I remember my maternal grandmother, Adela, was her name. She died when I was in the fifth grade. She was the best grandma. I loved going and visiting her and grand my grandfather on the farm. I remember her setting a beautiful table and preparing a lovely meal for the entire family. And when I say entire family, I mean it. I mean, there were aunts and uncles, cousins, and we'd all be gathered around the table. And I remember that after the prayer had been prayed, Grandma would sit down on the chair sideways. She sat sideways so that at any moment she could pop up, go into the kitchen, and get another platter of pot roast 
another bowl of potatoes or, or more water or coffee or the best part when she would serve her famous desserts. Up, down, in, out. She went for the entire meal, each time sitting down sideways. Did you have a grandmother or a grandfather like that? She was neither here nor there, neither present nor action. She was sideways. <laughs> sideways. I think that describes so many of us in our walk with Jesus. We're so busy in our daily lives, even if we're retired. We're still so busy. Think about it with family responsibilities. Maybe you're caring for somebody. Jobs to do, food to cook, bills to pay, yards to keep. That we have perfected the art of multitasking. We have to, because if we don't do two things at once, we'll never get it all done. And so we text and drive. We eat while we work. We comfort our children or grandchildren while we're making a grocery list or fixing the irrigation leak. One little boy was telling his dad about something that happened in school one day as dad was changing the oil to the riding lawnmower. And the little guy got so frustrated. Daddy, you're not listening to me. I'm, uh, uh, I'm listening to you, buddy, the dad said, as he continued with all the important work on the John Deere lawn tractor. Daddy, the little boy said, I want you to listen to me with your eyes. Mm. That's what Jesus wanted from Martha. She was overhearing his words as she came and went from the kitchen. She was listening sideways. But for that one moment, Jesus wanted her to listen with her eyes, with her hands, with her mind, with her heart. The words that he was saying were worthy of her full attention. And that is why, for this extraordinary moment, he affirmed Mary instead and gently nudged Martha to give the work a rest. And for these few minutes, just to ponder God's love and God's grace. And friends, I think that's what Jesus is wishing for us, too. You know, two decades ago, CBS anchor uh, Dan Rather conducted a lengthy interview with Mother Teresa, the Catholic nun who ministered to the poorest of the poor in Calcutta, India. And after hearing her share her story, story of, uh, after story of poverty, disease, and death, Dan Rather asked Mother Teresa, when you rise in the morning and you are talking to God, saying your prayers, and you have God's undivided attention, what do you say to God? Mother Teresa answered, oh, I listen. Dan Rather was taken aback. This was not the answer that he expected. Okay. He continued, and as you are sitting there listening to God, what is God saying to you? And Mother Teresa replied, nothing. He listens. Mm -hmm. And the interview broke to commercial at that point. <laughs> you know, friends, listening is what worship is all about. Yes, we sing, we pray, we preach, we give. But the primary task of worship is to gather at the feet of Jesus and to commune with him. And not just listen with our ears, but to listen with our eyes and with our hearts, with our very beings. To clear the clutter of our brains in this one hour. To set aside our grocery lists our golf schedules, the Facebook pages, and all the community gossip. And to instead be in intimate communion, communion with the God who also loves us so very much. And who wants you to listen to him say this and that. But most important to hear him say, I love you. This is not a just a Sunday morning thing, friends, but rather to take the time every day for all the craziness of our lives to be still, to breathe slowly, and to be quiet with God. And for that extraordinary moment, we have God's undivided attention, and he has ours too. Praise be to you, O God. I should we stand now for our hymn of the day, O oh, Master, let me walk with you.
mercy, we pray, on all who feel aimless in life and who seek deeper meaning and purpose. May they discover their inherent relationship with you, that sacred connection that leads to the fullness of life. Lord of light and life, this is our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from illness or because of life's unpredictable circumstances. Lord Jesus, we follow your way trusting in hope and faith for healing for all that causes suffering in our lives. Lord of light and life. Bless and guide the leaders of nations around this globe that they may be bold and courageous in practicing justice and caring for the welfare of our common home, the earth itself. Remind us, God, to be good stewards of all you have created. Lord of light and light. May this church and all churches that honor the name of Jesus find new strength and vitality to face the situations and circumstances in this heavy. Transform us, Lord, from witnessing to working, from closed doors to open minds, from the reluctant to the resurrected who dare to walk in his footsteps. Lord of light and life. Hear now, gentle spirit, the heart messages that we offer as prayers for people and situations that we had to your mercy and healing. All these thoughts, hopes, petitions, and deep desires we give into your sacred love, trusting in the good news of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
out your holy communion cup in the bag, you take that cup out and hold on to it after the great Thanksgiving, after the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer, we'll partake in the meal together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember in the night when Jesus was betrayed that he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, for supper he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave for all to drink. Saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory,
and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Just a few ministry announcements here this morning. Once again, it's good to be all with all of you. Um, if you're a guest with us, is it your first time worshiping here? Please, please come and worship with us again real soon. You'll notice that's tucked in your bulletin here this morning. There's this week at Resurrection. Uh, highlights programs and ministries at both locations. We'd love to have you partake and be a part of those. Um, also, we just want to say thank you, a huge uh, thank you, shout out to Charles, who uh, directed Resurrection Singers today. It's good to have you here today, Charles. <laughs> we want to thank you all you for your company today. It's beautiful work. Thank you. We have our pastoral staff intact here now. And Pastor Karen Morris has joined us, and she's actually preaching at the Royal Valley location here this morning. Uh, please come and welcome Pastor Karen at her installation. Uh, two weeks, uh, Saturday, July 30th, it's our 5 o'clock uh, evening service at, again, the Royal Valley location. There will be a dinner reception that will follow the worship service in the Outreach Center. Kindly make your reservations no later than July 18th. You can call the church office. Uh, at, uh, down at Toro Valley to make those reservations. 2022 school supply drive is going on now through August 1st. Look for the list of needed supplies in the school supplies drive article that is in this month's newsletter, uh, the July vision. Finally, volunteers are needed to prepare sandwiches and deliver lunches to Primavera Men's Shelter. We're meeting on Friday, July 22nd at 8.15, again down at the Toro Valley location, the Outreach Center Gymnasium. Donations are also needed for individual bags of chips, small apples, homemade cookies. Sign-up sheet on the, um, is out uh, in the uh, foyer there, and, or you can call the church office to be a part of that. Again, Primavera and Shelter. That being all of our announcements, I invite you to please stand now for the benediction. Mm -hmm. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. <clears throat>